Ooh, what's up, guys? Welcome to this edition of a Funko Popcast. I'm DK Wrestler. And I'm MD Shady. And today, this actually is the first edition of a Funko Popcast in actually almost two months. So it's been a while since we've done a podcast, so we may be a little rusty, but we're talking about the recently announced San Diego Comic Con 2024 exclusives. Of course, you guys would have seen on the channel already that we've been posting a lot of San Diego Comic Con content, whether it's the cop up or pass up, the worst of best, and then of course, MD Shady doing the Which is Better video this past week. So we should probably talk about first before going through every single exclusive for san diego comic-con the overall thoughts of what we think of the san diego comic-con exclusives which first of all took funko a while for them to reveal these exclusives i feel like that happens every year even to the point if you guys notice i actually called out funko about it on social media and they replied to my comment saying be patient and i'm like damn shots fired even did a youtube shorts about it showing the comment but nonetheless though i think it was maybe better than i thought it was going to be but i still think at the moment that c2e2 is the superior convention i think there is some good things but for the most part i mean you do have a ton of anime there's not not really a lot of superhero pops decent amount of disney that i've noticed and then they've kind of done an array of different lineups like even the games lineup with the pokemon pop we're going to be talking about and then seeing a muppets and sesame street pop which is cool overall there is a decent amount but i don't know i feel like a lot of people were a little disappointed about this year's reveals there is definitely maybe a few things that i would be getting from here but i don't know i feel like the last couple of years with different conventions seems like there's less and less exclusives I want from these conventions and I'm more excited about some of those commons or exclusives outside of the convention but overall I think it's okay but I still think so far C2E2 is the superior convention this year yeah like overall with this con it does seem a little lackluster there are some cool pops on here but I would say out of the like five or six and that might even be a stretch of pops that I actually want from this con most of them are already characters that already have existing pops so that's kind of a letdown, but there is some cool stuff. So we're going to go in order of when Funko actually posted each of the exclusives. And I'm going to try my best since we are recording this literally 24 hours after the reveals that happened on the shared retailers for both Canada and the United States of America. So the first one we're going to be looking at here is the Batman Superman Fusion for the DC Comics lineup, which is going to be shared with the Funko Shop in the US only. And I think this was a pretty decent looking pop. Definitely one of my favorite DC pops they've done the last couple of years for conventions. Yeah, this pop is interesting looking. The colors and the way that they blend is weird. I don't know, but I do like the idea of this pop. Next up, we have ourselves a classic Godzilla, which this is going to be shared with the Funko Shop in the U.S. only, nowhere in Canada. Obviously, this is something I'm not entirely interested in, but I do like the way that the colors look on here with the green and especially with the yellow popping out. I think it's a pretty decent looking pop. I think it may be the best Godzilla pop they've done this year, especially with the ones they've done with the Godzilla and King Kong movie pops. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what I was going to say. I like the way that this looks. It probably is one of of my favorite Godzilla pops and yeah the yellow just pops off of that pop so well especially with the darkness of the way that the green and black kind of fuse together on this pop Next announcement is a pop of Beagle Scout Snoopy from, of course, Peanuts. This is going to be shared with, I believe, the Funko Shop in the U.S. and then Walmart, of all places, here in Canada. I think this is all right. I think we've gotten a couple of Beagle Scout Snoopies already, especially in a pop deluxe form. So I think they could have done something, even like a new character, perhaps, for Peanuts. Yeah, this is interesting. It definitely seems like we've seen this pop before, but of course, it is a little bit different. And overall, I like the pop. I don't think it's bad, but again, it could have been a new character that we haven't seen or just something a little bit different for the Peanuts lineup. Next up is Papa Smurf for the Smurfs lineup, which this is going to be shared with, I believe, Target in the US and then Walmart here in Canada. And this is pretty decent. There is that new wave of Smurfs pops that got released, including Smurfette with a chase. So this is just kind of adding on to it. And I kind of like the idea of them doing a convention exclusive. Maybe there'll be one for New York Comic Con. I think it kind of makes sense for Papa Smurf to be a convention exclusive rather than being part of like the regular set, even as a regular 
Color exclusive. Yeah, I like this pop. I think it makes sense for Papa Smurf to be the con exclusive because I feel like that is definitely a fan favorite Smurf for most people. And I like the way that they've gone with the Smurfs lineup. I think that uh, it's pretty good so far. And this pop is just decent. There's nothing really wrong with it. Next up, we have ourselves a Vaporizing 001 from Stranger Things, which this is going to be shared with Target in the U.S. only. No retailers in Canada are going to be holding this, Bob. I don't really got much to say. I think this is where I think MD could talk a lot about this, considering I've pretty much stated what I needed to state about this pop throughout the videos that have been posted this past week on the channel. All I'm going to say is I'm just bored of seeing a bunch of 001 Henry Creel or even Vecna pops at this point. I'm hoping this pop pop's gonna look better in person i think from the glam shot that we have here it's just uh it's kind of ugly and like dk said yeah seeing another zero zero one kind of sucks seeing announcements like this makes it really hard to actually want to go and do like 100 complete set because i don't know how many zero zero ones i need in my collection i feel like i could probably just completely pass on this one Next exclusive is actually a set of Biddy Pops, and it's for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and this is more specifically like the comic book version. So there's obviously four different sets with different characters involved, and of course the mystery figures, which I'm not going to go through what all the figures are, because most likely you guys know what the figures are. And these are going to be limited to 4,000 pieces, so it's going to be, actually I think it is listed as a Funko Shop shared exclusive and not typically a con only pop realistically and i think this is okay and i think it definitely makes sense to make these more limited because if you are gonna get this or the original set of Biddy Pops, then I think most likely you would rather want the originals rather than this comic book version. I really enjoy the Biddy Pops. These are ridiculous, though. I do not like this. It's the exact same set of TMNT Pops, of course, with just a different uh, paint on them, essentially. The only thing that's saving these is that it's 4,000 pieces, so it does make it a little bit more limited and more of like a collector's piece. But besides that, it's so unnecessary, and that's really unfortunate. Next pop is Protozoa from Xenon, girl of the 21st century. And this pop is going to be limited to 4,000 pieces and shared with the Funko shop in the U.S. only. This is pretty decent. I mean, when I first heard about this, it was on that like rumored slash leaked list. So I didn't even remember who Protozoa was. Overall, I think this is a pretty decent pop to be a limited piece count to where it's limited, but not so limited. Because realistically, when you get to those piece counts like four or 5,000, it isn't exactly so limited these days. Yeah, it's really cool to see some Xenon pops or at least one right here. I think that that's a great idea. It's something new and refreshing. It's not just the same old Disney type pops. It's something that we haven't really seen, which is great. And being 4,000 pieces makes sense to me. I think that they're not going to sell a ton of this pop realistically. So being limited piece count is just the perfect way to go with it. Next pop listed is Edna Mode from The Incredibles, which this is going to be shared with the Funko Shop in the U.S. and Walmart here in Canada. And I was really excited to see this announcement because, of course, Incredibles, very popular Pixar movie, actually celebrates its 20th anniversary this year, which probably the reason why they're having an exclusive here rather than, let's say, like a Toy Story pop like we did for C2E2. But I'm OK with the idea of maybe this convention and the following convention being Incredibles. And then let's have the entire year of 2025 be Toy Story for the 30th anniversary of that movie. So to get this new Edna mode is awesome, especially if you can never obtain that OG Edna mode. That's just, I don't even know how much it costs at this point, but it's a very valuable pop. Can't wait to see what else they do, because I'm sure this isn't going to be the only Incredibles pop in 2024, since it is the 20th anniversary of the movie this year. Yeah, this pops okay. I didn't realize that there was only one other Edna mode. It feels like there's been more for whatever reason probably just because of the Funko sodas and maybe like I think there was like one for the Pixar mini set or something like that as well so yeah this isn't a bad pop I like the posing I like the way that the glasses are and the facial expression is pretty good but uh, I just wish this would have been filled with like a Toy Story pop rather than Incredibles especially being a character that we've already seen in the past Next pop listed is Kermit the Frog from the Muppets, which is going to be shared with the Funko Shop in the U.S. 
and GameStop here in Canada, which I mean, always excited to see a pop that I may want to get be exclusive to GameStop here in Canada, considering that that's our closest retailer to us. So it's easily accessible. This pop, though, I felt like it could have been a little bit better. I was kind of right on my predictions by saying it was a Kermit pop, but not exactly the way that they actually pulled it off here. This is like Kermit with the cup. And later on, and I didn't realize what it was really based off of until I believe I seen in the comments on social media with a gif of like Kermit uh, smooshing his face there. That's kind of what it's based off. So that's pretty cool. Let's see what we get for New York Comic Con because maybe they can pull a, a better Muppets pop than we have here. So this pop definitely fits the trend of what I've been talking about, about getting characters that we've already had pops of before. This is like the fourth Kermit the Frog now, I think, that we've gotten, which is crazy to think because just like a year ago, there was only two, and those are both fairly old pops. I just, I really wish we could have got a different character from the Muppets, but this pop does have good things going for it. The scrunch face is awesome. It's really cool to see Kermit like that. And the coffee mug is great as well. I love seeing the Kermit with the coffee mug and the attention to detail to have Kermit only holding the mug with the two fingers, I think is awesome. I'm surprised Funko went uh, that hard into this pop like that, but it's a great pop and I'll probably end up adding it to my collection. The next pop, or I should mention next pops that we're going to be talking about, same pop being the Beach Attired Zero from Nightmare Before Christmas, which there's a regular version that's going to be shared with the Funko Shop in the US and GameStop here in Canada. But then there's also a glow-in-the-dark version that's going to be limited to 3,000 pieces and I believe will be con only. You can only get it if you're at San Diego Comic-Con itself, which this has been a trend we have been noticing and will be a little bit of a trend as we keep talking about these exclusives where they'll make a regular version and then a slightly different one with the specification as a con only pop example i've mentioned on the channel a few times already gelatinous cube from WonderCon last year where we had the regular one and then the glow in the dark one that was con only for dungeon and dragons that was pretty decent but now we're seeing this trend as terms to people want to see limited piece counts but it just seems like it's just specification versions and not like separate characters we've never seen before for. This pop, I understand because they're doing that kind of set of beach attire night before Christmas pots, but I don't know. I'm not entirely a fan of this specific version. The glow in the dark definitely makes sense for the fact that, of course, Zero is a ghost dog. So giving that ghost effect, I guess, makes sense. But I'm not entirely the biggest fan of this pop per se. And neither am I. <laughs> I, I don't think that this is that great. I don't really like the beach attire to begin with. And it's two different pops as well when you take in that glow in the dark specification on the 3000 piece pop. And I just think that there's already a ton of Zero pops. We don't really need any anymore. Next pop listed is a six inch bandage Baymax from Big Hero 6, which there's going to be a regular version that's going to be shared with the Funko Shop in the US only. And then there's going to be a 1500 piece con only glitter version. And for the most part, I like the detail of the bandages, and from what I'm looking at in the photo right now, I kind of dig the glitter pop more than the regular one, which is a little bit surprising considering that we've mentioned in the past about like glitter and diamond collection pops not being entirely the greatest, but there's something about this Baymax that actually looks pretty sweet. It kind of gives off the effect of like a snow globe in a way, so I kind of want to see this pop like not entirely in person, but if like, let's say Tristan from Top Ops is going to be going to San Diego Comic Con, if he picks this up and shows it off in his video, that's when I kind of want to view it and see like how good it looks compared to the glam shot that we're looking at. But so far, the glam shot right now, it's looking like the limited piece count glitter one actually looks better than the regular one. This is an okay pop. It's nice to see some big hero six pops. Of course, Baymax being a fan favorite character and the bandages are silly and fun. So I kind of enjoy that. The glitter pop, I'm not sure how I feel about. It definitely seems like it is like a translucent pop with like the glitter on the inside. So that could be very interesting to see. And like, DK said I'd like to check it out in like a video or something. Definitely not a pop that I need for my collection. The next exclusive we're looking at is the next Project Fred that's going to be released and it is based off of Deadpool. Two words I gotta say about this. F***ing garbage. This thing is terrible this easily and it's a little bit of a spoiler since the video technically hasn't released as we are recording this but you guys would have seen already in the video that i would have rated this the worst exclusive for san diego comic-con this year this may even be the worst exclusive that funko has done ever 
bringing back those artist series again that just are terrible. And today, as we're recording this, they did reveal some new Project Freds for Flintstones, which that's how you should do Project Fred. Not what we have here with Deadpool. You could have pulled this off with like wearing a Deadpool outfit. Yeah, this is terrible. And this should have never existed as a Comic-Con exclusive or just an exclusive overall. Yeah, this is terrible. The Project Fred lineup is very interesting to me to begin with because they're tough to get especially being a canadian but then we get this and it's like artist series 2.0 which is actually a comment that i'm seeing on the uh, instagram post and i would say about 80 to 90 percent of the comments on this post are people just hating on it i don't disagree with people commenting on it because wow maybe one of the worst like artist series type pops i've ever seen either and it's not even a pop so so bad uh i really hope we don't see this being a continuing trend and in the future because this is just shameful honestly next exclusive we're looking at is mr sinister for x-men in which this is going to be shared with the funko shop in the u.s and then gamestop here in canada and this is okay i remember they did a mr sinister for like a walgreens exclusive but from what i last remember that pop kind of dig that one better than this one but i understand why they made this as some sort of hype towards probably the deadpool and wolverine movie coming out and wolverine's being a part of x-men and i have this weird feeling that maybe mr sinister could be a part of that that Deadpool and Wolverine movie without really knowing yet until I actually see the movie in theaters, which I can't wait. Already got my ticket. Yeah, I agree with that. This is an okay pop. It's not bad at all. It is a character that we've seen before, but I like this version. I think he looks cool. The detail's good. So I don't really have much to complain about with this pop. Next up for Marvel, we have ourselves Spider Boy. And I believe this is going to be shared with Target in the U.S. and Walmart here in Canada. And this is actually a pretty decent looking pop. I don't know too much about Spider Boy, but I think I've seen from like a post from someone I follow on Instagram that Spider Boy is like barely new as terms to Marvel. Like a character that hasn't even been made, I think, in the last 10 years. So like that new. So that's pretty cool to see instead of like, I mean, another it's technically like part of Spider-Man, I would assume, but I don't know. The design looks really nice. The blue, the red, and especially how it's like that beigey eyes going on. Like the overall design is pretty cool. One of those like things that I don't really know too much about, but just intrigues me a lot. Yeah, I think that was well said by DK because I couldn't really sum it up much better than that. Yeah, this is an intriguing pop. I think it looks good. The eyes pop out very well. And it's a character that we haven't seen and people have actually been pretty hyped for, like asking for. So it's cool that we got it and makes sense to be a con exclusive why not at San Diego Comic-Con? Next up, we have ourselves some Star Wars pots, which I'm actually going to start off by mentioning about the Diamond Collection Grand Admiral Thrawn from the Ahsoka series, which will be limited to 3,000 pieces, so it will be con only. But then we have the regular version of Grand Admiral Thrawn from the Ahsoka series, and then a Darth Vader, which I'm not sure which that one's really based off of. But both of these are exclusive to the Funko Shop, I believe, in the U.S., but both will be shared to GameStop here in Canada. And Grand Admiral Thrawn is all right. When I heard about the rumor slash leak i kind of figured it was ahsoka and not like a very cool one they could have pulled off for let's say rebels per se but then the darth vader in the glam shot actually looks pretty pimp but i remember seeing the photos posted of people already having it in hands from overseas and it doesn't look as good from what i've seen as i've seen in the glam shot there is so many characters in the Star Wars universe, and I get it, Funko has made a lot of them, but there's got to be some different ones that we could see rather than two characters that we've already had pops up before. I believe this is like the fourth and fifth now versions of Grand Admiral Thrawn. I will say it is my favorite out of those. Definitely not the Diamond Collection one, but the like the more common one is probably my favorite Grand Admiral Thrawn that we've seen, but oh, it's so unnecessary. And then the Darth Vader, there's been... So many Darth Vaders. This one's pretty badass. I kind of like how this looks. I like the red. I think it looks pretty cool, but it's also just so unnecessary. Like if you already have so many Darth Vaders in your collection, are you really going to want to get this one? Maybe because it is pretty badass, like I said, but at the same time, just, I don't know. I have really mixed feelings about it. 
The next pop we're looking at is a scented sugar from One Piece, which this is going to be shared with the Funko Shop in the U.S. and GameStop here in Canada. This is actually a pretty decent looking pop, and it's been a while since we've had some sort of scented pop as a convention exclusive from what I last remember, especially for San Diego Comic-Con, because the last one I remember was, I believe, Brian Fantana from Anchorman. This pop looks pretty decent as terms to, if it wasn't scented, just the detail overall. And one thing I will mention that I'm surprised is that there's actually no wanted poster for San Diego Comic-Con this year. They must have stopped. Overall, I like the idea of them obviously doing a character which I believe has never had a Funko Pop before, so I like when they do that for San Diego Comic-Con. Obviously, I feel like this will end up selling out because One Piece is like Funko's number one anime when it comes to Pops right now, and pretty much every single one sells out for the most part. I don't remember one that hasn't sold out or hasn't sold out like maybe like the day of, but like a few days later, then it will sell out. Yeah, this is probably the most solid pop that we've seen so far that we've talked about because, yeah, new character, the detail is great, and the specification of being scented, there's some mixed emotions about that, obviously the scent on scented pops just wears away so fast, sometimes even before you get the pop, like especially if you wait a little bit to, let's say, purchase this pop, let's say you get this in a year, there's no way you're going to smell that scent, but it's also such a cool specification, and I think it makes sense for this character, this is just a really good pop. Next pop we're looking at is Satoru Gojo from Jujutsu Kaisen, and I believe once again, this is shared with the Funko Shop in the US and GameStop here in Canada. I don't know what to say that I haven't said about previous Jujutsu Kaisen exclusives because I believe every single one I keep talking about is another Satoru Gojo. It just feels like I don't know any other character from Jujutsu Kaisen besides Satoru Gojo because that seems like all they make. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking when I seen this announcement is that I feel like I've seen this pop a hundred times over at this point. I don't know anything about Jujutsu Kaisen, but uh, I, I I know what this guy looks like. I'll tell you that. <laughs> but yeah, I guess like it's it's an OK pop. There's not a ton going for it. The pose is cool, I guess, with his foot up on whatever that is. But besides that, it is very basic. There's not a ton of detail into this pop. Next pop we're looking at, Shinobu Kocho from Demon Slayer, which this is going to be shared with Box Lunch, I believe, in the U.S. and GameStop here in Canada. I can honestly say that out of the Demon Slayer Comic-Con exclusives, as far as I remember, this may be the worst one. This just doesn't scream that I want to get it and add it to my collection, especially as a Comic-Con exclusive. Even last year's Demon Slayer 2-pack, where we had a new character plus another Tanjiro, I was fine with that. But then seeing this pop where the character, I believe we've had two or three pops over, and it's just like a running pose this time i don't know it doesn't really excite me i just i don't know if maybe demon slayer is at that point now like dragon ball a few years back where it's just like now we're just doing these pointless molds for characters we've gotten tons of pops for already so i'm not too excited for i don't know how many demon slayer fans as of the recording of this podcast are actually really excited about this pop i have to agree with that uh i do like the way that this pop looks i think it looks good but yeah it's just i think there's been better ones of this character so so it really, like, if I collected Demon Slayer Pops, I would probably end up passing on this pop, and that's never a good thing. Next pop is Gara from Naruto Shippuden, which this is going to be shared with GameStop in both Canada and the U.S. Oh, yet again, this looks like a pop that I've already seen before. I swear I even uh, searched up a photo once these got revealed, this is basically almost identical to that Hot Topic exclusive version with like that same effect of like that sandstorm, except it's slightly different for the sandstorm and it's a slightly pose, different pose. Like that's basically it. Yeah, this Gara is, it's okay. It's not bad. I think it is like one of the better ones or maybe even the best, but yeah, it is almost the exact same thing. It's just a little bit of new molding. It looks a little better, but I don't know. Maybe if you didn't get that first one, then get this one. But besides that, it doesn't have much going for it. The next pop here is the Elemental Hero Flame Wingman from Yu-Gi-Oh!, which is going to be shared with Hot Topic in both Canada and the U.S. And I am, of course, excited for this, and I'm sure MD is too, because we're collecting Yu-Gi-Oh! Pops even for me to be the point that I'm almost at 100% for this set. This is easily, in my opinion, out of now. This is, I think, the third elemental hero they have made for the set. This has got to be the best one. And I'm glad that they chose this one for a convention exclusive because it screams convention. This is another one that I will be glad to purchase and add to my Funko Pop collection. Well done, Funko.
Yeah, this is a great pop. We were talking in our group chat about like, when are they going to announce this pop? And then it finally did. And it looks so much better than I expected because sometimes some Yu-Gi-Oh characters slash like dual monsters don't really translate well into Funko Pop form. And I think they did a great job with this one. I think that it's a hard character to make into a Funko Pop and they did very, very well. The detail is awesome. Super happy about this. Maybe one of my like top wants for the con. There are a few other pops that I really want, but this one is definitely one of those ones that like you can't pass up on this if you are collecting the Yu-Gi-Oh set of pops. It's just so well done. But Funko, where is the Flame Swordsman now? I need that pop so bad, but this is really cool as well. Next pop we're looking at is a 10-inch Arceus from Pokemon, which is going to be shared with GameStop in both Canada and the U.S. Makes sense that this is GameStop exclusive, considering that, of course, Pokemon, it's a game, and you get the cards from GameStop for the most part. You can get them at Walmart, too. But nonetheless, it's continuing that trend of 10-inch Pokemon pop, but it's a brand new Pokemon that hasn't been made yet into a pop. So I kind of like the aspect of new, but I don't like the aspect of 10 inch. But I mean, I did notice that Cresselia actually sold quite a bit compared to seeing the last few years of let's get Charmander. This year he's going to be flocked. Next year he's going to be metallic. Next year he's going to be diamond collection. Like I'd rather see the trend they're doing right now, even though it's a 10 inch pop rather than what they've been doing the past few years. Yeah, there's definitely pros and cons for this pop. Pros are, it's a brand new pop. It's Arceus. That's pretty cool. And of course, the cons are, it's a jumbo size pop. I feel like just reading through a couple of these comments, people are also wishing it was just the four inch pop because a lot of people don't have room to fit these jumbo size pops, even though some pops are really cool jumbo size, like this Arceus. I think it does look sweet. I think being that big is really cool, but it's just, it's tough to find room, especially with some of these Pokemon pops where the box is potentially going to be a lot wider than it needs to be, which is just taking up space in your collection. And then another con is that I'm no longer collecting Pokemon Pops outside of the original 151, so this isn't anything that I need for my collection. Next pop we're looking at is Marvin the Martian with Flag from Looney Tunes, which I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this will be shared with Toy Tokyo in the U.S. and Walmart here in Canada. When I first seen this, I thought I was a little disappointed because I thought, oh, it's another Marvin the Martian. But then I thought to myself, I think this is the first standalone Marvin the Martian pop they've done for the actual Looney Tunes lineup because the other ones were like the mashup with Scooby-Doo or the only way you can get it is through that rides that came out like so long ago on the Funko shop. So I think this actually is the first standalone Marvin the Martian pop you can get, which is great for Looney Tunes fans. I'm sure MD is excited for this because I'm sure he's wanted some sort of Marvin the Martian pop. Overall, I dig the pop, especially with those white eyes popping out. Yeah, so basically with this Marvin the Martian, it's the first Looney Tunes set Marvin the Martian. We've had the Duck Dodgers ones that had all those different, I think San Diego Comic-Con exclusive colorways with like the pink and the green and the orange or whatever. And then of course, for both of the Space Jam movies, we've seen Marvin the Martian. And then of course that rides was also Duck Dodgers, where I think, I do believe he was wearing this attire in that rides, but this is the first standalone of just your classic Marvin the Martian attire, which is awesome. The eyes are weird because I think it's also the first time where we've seen like full round eyes on a Marvin the Martian and they're not like squinty, but I think it's wicked. I love it. He's got the flag. Really, really cool. Definitely going to be an add to my Looney Tunes set. Next pop is a six inch Voltron, which this is going to be shared with the Funko shop in the US only, considering that this will be limited to 5,000 pieces. And this is kind of my example of what I was talking about of how like 4,000 or 5,000 doesn't seem as limited because I find that it actually takes a while for something that's 5,000 pieces to sell, especially when you talk about Funko sodas. I feel like a lot of Funko sodas that are that low don't really sell out quickly, especially the Lost Boys sodas that were 5,000 pieces for New York Comic Con last Last year never ended up selling out on the Funko shop and you think they would because of how low the piece count is but I think at this point 5,000 pieces isn't really that small of a piece count when it comes to Funko nowadays but overall I think it's really cool to bring the return of Voltron and making a limited piece count I think there is a specific market for this specific character uh, that people will definitely want to get this and I love the detail involved especially with the way that like the feet are 
Yeah, this is a pretty cool pop. Of course, we've seen Voltron before, but this one looks great. The detail's awesome and limited to 5,000 pieces. Yeah, like DK said, like 5,000 pieces isn't really that limited. And when I look at like a 4,000 or 5,000 piece count pop, even upwards to like, let's say like the 8,000 pops that we see every once in a while, pops like that, let's say if it's like a $30 pop, let's say in like a year from now, let's say a common pop or like a common exclusive for $30. If it's limited piece count like this, of like 5,000 pieces, you're maybe looking at like $40 instead. Like it's really not that much of a difference in price. Next pop we're looking at is Elmo with Rocco from Sesame Street, which this is going to be shared with the Funko Shop in the U.S. and GameStop here in Canada. And this is a pretty sweet pop. I love the way they did the eyes because it goes with that scene. Of course, seeing the return of Sesame Street, just like the Muppets and Pop Form is awesome to see some of those lines we haven't seen in nearly a decade i'm really excited a lot of people are super excited i think the only small gripe that people were mentioning is that they wish this pop was flocked which i think they didn't do it here because they made the elmo on trike from target con a flocked pop yeah this is really cool i love the way that this elmo looks and for someone who has an almost 100 percent sesame street collection i don't have an elmo pop yet so this will probably be the first one that i get i of course need to get that og one and I'll probably end up at some point getting the Elmo on the trike. But I can say this is probably my favorite Elmo besides, like, let's say the flocked one from the OG set. But this one is just really solid. He looks so derpy, which is so perfect. Next pop we're looking at is a glow-in-the-dark Lord Soth from Dungeons and Dragons, which is going to be shared with GameStop in both Canada and the U.S. Usually never have a negative thing to say about Dungeons and Dragons pops. The glow-in-the-dark aspect is pretty cool, and it didn't really need it, but it's a nice attention to detail. Yeah, I, I think Lord Soth is pretty badass. I think he's looking really cool in this Funko Pop. The glow-in-the-dark aspect is very interesting because it's like multiple colors, which I hope looks wicked in person. This is a pop that if I do see this in person, like for retail, I'll probably buy and I'll probably end up giving it to one of my coworkers just because I want to see how that glows in person. And the detail on this is just insane on the helmet is just ridiculous. Even on the body, it's really, really cool. I like how this looks a lot. Next pop we're looking at is a new Harry Potter. More specifically, it's Expecto Patronum Harry Potter. This is going to be shared with Target in the U.S. and Walmart here in Canada. This is meh. It's not entirely too exciting. We do see that a lot with convention exclusive Harry Potter pops nowadays. It is based off of Prisoner of Azkaban for the one specific scene. Plus, they have been making huge waves of pops for that movie since it is the 20th anniversary of that movie this year. So I guess I'm okay with that because Prisoner of Azkaban actually is my favorite Harry Potter movie, but I think they definitely could have done something a little bit better than just Expecto Patronum. I don't have much to say about this pop, honestly. The only thing that I will say is that I think Funko needs to make a lights and sounds Harry Potter of him saying, he's going to sacrifice himself, and then f***ing stop making Harry Potter pops. Like, maybe some new characters, but Harry Potter is ridiculous. This has got to be, like, a character definitely maybe, like, top two or three of, like, most amount of pops ever for harry potter it's just ridiculous and they're never really amazing i think that a lot of the really really good ones were made early on and now they're just just milking it so so unnecessary Next pop we're looking at, an Enid and Wednesday moments from, of course, the Netflix series Wednesday, which this is going to be shared with Barnes & Noble in the U.S. only. I dig this pop, actually, for the fact that even though we have another Wednesday pop, you do have, I believe, now the second Enid pop, and I think this was a kind of cool moment they did where, obviously, it's like the window in their dorm room where half of it's just blank, and then the other one is just super colorful because of Enid. This is pretty decent, and I kind of figured that we're probably get more Wednesday pops throughout the year even at New York Comic Con which I'm going to just randomly predict even though we will have a New York Comic Con predictions video most likely soon that I think they should do a werewolf Enid flocked version as the next Wednesday pop for a convention exclusive I think that'd be really cool just to not make another Wednesday pop realistically yeah this pop is pretty sick I like this a lot actually it's very kind of plain they're not really doing much but it doesn't need to be anything fancy I think that the whole scenery kind of speaks for itself I think it's good and it really makes me want to rewatch Wednesday I really enjoyed it Next pop we're looking at is a Wicked Witch of the West with Winged Monkey as a part of the Wizard of Oz 85th anniversary set, which out of all places, 
This is actually going to be shared with Walgreens in the US only. And I'm kind of 50-50 about this pop. I don't really like it for the fact that it's another Wicked Witch. And especially we get another Winged Monkey, but it's more of a buddy form. But I like it for the fact that they actually like switched up the way that the Wicked Witch. When I first heard this like rumor slash leaked, I thought it was just repurposing both of the regular pops and make it like a specification of sorts. Like maybe one's metallic and one's glow in the dark or something like that, even though they made the Chase Wing Monkey a metallic pop already. But I like the idea of the Wicked Witch having the sphere there with like the smoke. I think that would also be another pop that would be Wicked as a glow in the dark pop. But honestly, I'm just going to say here is that MD Shady's prediction of the three pack of the Munchkins was definitely a better option that they should have done rather than this pop and buddy yeah, I kind of feel the same way. I've been really debating on collecting the Wizards of Oz pops. And if I do, I feel like this is probably the way to go. I'll probably get this pop rather than getting the other Wicked Witch of the West and the Flying Monkey. I feel like if I just get this, then I'd be satisfied with that because I don't need a bunch of versions of these characters. I just want some really cool moldings of each character. I like this. I love how the witch has the crystal ball like that. I think it's cool. And addition of the Flying Monkey is really cool. It will definitely save space in the collection where basically I don't have to add another box onto a shelf with the flying monkey if it's just a pop and buddy with this pop. Next pop we're looking at is a Diggum Frog with cereal from Honey Smacks. And not going to lie, even though I don't collect that much Ad Icons, this is kind of disappointing. And I feel very bad for Ad Icons fans, especially MD. That's his number one set that he collects pops for. That I feel like, and I'm going to predict this, that this may be a pop that MD actually skips out on. Because I feel like the common version with its mouth open in the spoon is actually much better than what they had here. Who the f thought of this one this is absolutely abysmal yeah let's close the mouth and add a bowl of cereal in the hand and make the spoon smaller wow this is so ridiculous i could see funko getting away with this with it being like a new common diggum frog but being a con exclusive is ridiculous it's the exact same pop but worse it's literally worse. And Diggum Frog was like one of the first pops that I added to my Ad Icons collection. So I do really enjoy that first one. It's really going to suck when there's another hole in the numbers of my Ad Icons collection. Because like DK said, there's not a f***ing chance I'm spending any money on this to see Diggum Frog with his mouth closed instead of being open. One of the most disappointing con pops in the history of Funko, in my opinion. This is terrible, terrible, terrible. Funko talks about how they need to start making sets smaller so that they can save money and stuff like this. And then they do Diggum Frog, a pop that they've already done as a con exclusive. It doesn't make any sense. Why would anyone buy this? The next exclusive is the Funko Airways t-shirt. And I'm not going to talk about much about this because I like it, but I don't because it's that gripe I always have where small logo on the front and big logo on the back. I hate that design. I don't think it's a bad t-shirt. The gray is interesting. I think that it could have maybe looked better if it was like a navy blue t-shirt perhaps, and then maybe just change up the color of that blue on the front and back of the t-shirt. But besides that, I kind of enjoy it. I like the small logo on the front of this one and the big logo on the back. It's cool to see Proto as well on the shirt. I think that that's pretty awesome, but I don't really like the gray for this. I think it would have looked better in like a navy. The next exclusives, I'm going to talk about all these in one shot because they're all exclusive to the Funko Shop for the most part. And I should have mentioned that for the t-shirt also. That's Funko Shop exclusive. So we got ourselves the Funkoville Biddy Pops along with soda figures of Fun Mart Freddy and the Can of Corn Freddy. I kind of dig these Biddy Pops, not going to lie for the sake that you actually have pops in here that like have actually never been made into a pop yet. So that'd be pretty cool to get the Biddy Pop and there may never be an actual full on pop of that. And then with the sodas, I'm still curious, maybe by the time actually, because like I mentioned earlier, we're recording this the day after these got revealed, but maybe that answer will be solved by the time this podcast gets released. Are there chases for the sodas or is it just singular cans? Overall, these are okay. I kind of like the can of corn one better than the Fun Mart. I'm still curious now as I look at the photo, is it 5,000 pieces for the soda for a can of corn or is it 9,500 because it shows that on the glam shot and it's 
really confusing me. Which one is it, Funko? Both 5,000? I'm just going to assume maybe it's, for some reason, the way that the can is. I think this is a pretty cool set of Biddy Pops. I like the way each character looks, but I do have a gripe about it. And that gripe is that there's two Freddies in this set. I think that if they would have taken out the Paperboy Freddy, most likely and put in a max token head as, let's say, even just as a paper boy, this would be a perfect set of Biddy Pops. That would be something that I would definitely need to get my hands on. And then with the cans, uh, these are okay. The can of corn one is very interesting. And yeah, I was literally going to mention this, and then DK had brought it up where it says 9,500 pieces on the can, which is just like, how do they screw this up? I'm assuming they probably just put the wrong logo on the corner where it will be probably 9,500 pieces. But both of them are just okay, I think. They're nothing too crazy. I do like how Fun Mart Freddy does have a Funko Soda in his hand, though. That's pretty cool. But yeah, overall, all three of these products are just okay. Could have been better. And then last but not least, I will mention these all at the same time. Also are the Freddy Funko related pops that are going to be at this convention, starting off with the Mayor Freddy, which is going to be limited to 3000 pieces. And then we got ourselves the pops of Drive-In Franny and Pizzeria Proto that are limited to 1500 pieces. I dig all three of these pops way more than the C2E2 ones. And the C2E2 ones weren't entirely that bad. Like I obviously was going with the Airways theme. When it comes to the Franny and Protos, these are leaps and bounds better than the ones from C2E2. Even the Franny. The Franny looks absolutely amazing. And then especially Pizzeria Proto is straight f***ing Fire. I don't care how many people crap on Proto saying, oh, he's not good as Freddy Funko. He's definitely not as good as Franny. This Pizzeria Proto is awesome. It's the best. I'm going to say it right now, the best Proto Pop that they have ever done. One of the highlights, in my opinion, of this year's San Diego Comic Con. Yeah, all three of these pops are pretty bang on. I, I like all three in their own ways, for sure. The Franny is wicked. I love the way that that looks. The Pizzeria Proto is hilarious. I think that's so cool. I love the red chef's hat on him is really awesome. The spot on his ear being red is a really cool attention to detail as well. The mustache is so funny. And then the rest of the attire is really cool as well. And then the Mayor Freddy is just a really solid Freddy. I think that it looks good and it makes sense. It's, it's pretty cool. And seeing like all three of these guys together in one slide like this multiple times now because we now have seen a few different protos and a few frannies it really makes me want to see funko make either like a youtube channel or an actual like tv show involving these characters i think that that'd be so much fun i think that the like antics that proto could get up to would just be hilarious in a tv show so maybe that's something that funko's looking into doing i think that that'd be a great way to kind of get more sales on the franny freddy and proto pops as well because if people are watching this tv show they're gonna fall in love with these characters more likely than just seeing them at cons being con exclusives but yeah all three of these are so good anyways guys that is gonna be the end of this edition of a funko podcast and if you enjoy this don't forget to like comment and subscribe let us know down below on your thoughts about the san diego comic-con exclusives we hope to see you guys on the next video or podcast here on the channel one two three i'm out of here why are there so many songs about rainbows peace in peace out <laughs>